Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you why you should use the Option Explicit command in your Microsoft Access VBA. Okay, so here I am in my database, my Tech Help free template. It's a free download off my website if you want to grab a copy, by the way. Let's say I'm here in my customer form. Okay, and I want to make a little button that simply increments the family size by one every time I click on it. So I'll go into Design View. I'll just copy one of these buttons up here, copy paste. I'll slide it down here. I'll put a plus one in there for the caption. Open up that button's properties. I'll call this my plus one button, whatever you want to call it. And then let's go into the build event for that button. That'll bring up my VBA editor. Now, by default, in my databases, I've got the option explicit command on. What does that mean? Well, that says I have to explicitly declare any variables. All right, so if I want to use a custom variable like, you know, dim x as integer, I have to tell access exactly that, dim x as an integer. Let's say I don't have it there. So I'm not forcing access to declare variables. All right, so let's come in here. Now, the name of my field is family size. All right, that's the name of the text box so if i just type in here family size equals family size plus one okay save that come back over here to my form i'm going to close it and reopen it and i click the button and all right looks great it's working right click the button it adds one to family size each time i click it now let's pretend that I accidentally misspelled family size. Now this might seem like a, a simple example and it is, but if you've got hundreds and hundreds of lines of code in here, it's very easy to miss a misspelling. I'm going to say at least 90% of the questions that I get or that I get asked in my forums involve a misspelling of some kind. I, I, I'm not exaggerating that claim. All right, but I just mistyped family size. You know, I've been, I've been up all night, not enough coffee. Okay. I didn't catch that. Now, I come back to my button and I'm clicking on it and it's just setting it to one. What's happening? Why is it not working now? Now I got to go through my thousands of lines of code to try to figure out where the problem is. I'm not getting any error messages. If I come back in here and I try to compile my code, right? Debug compile, nothing. Happens. I don't get any warning messages. I don't get any error messages. It just doesn't work. Those are the worst kinds of errors, runtime errors that your code just doesn't work and you have no idea why. One of my favorite memes, by the way, my code doesn't work. I have no idea why. And then a little bit later, my code works. I have no idea why. <laughs> I love this one. Okay. But now let's say we were good little programmers and we had option explicit up here that forces you to declare all of your variables. Now, if something's not declared as a variable and you don't have that access, will just assume you want a variant, a variable of type variant, which means it could be anything. All right, but with this, you have to explicitly declare your variables. And if you don't, and it's not a form field name, you'll get an error message. So now if I try to run this, ah, I get an error message, variable not defined. And I can very easily now see that I misspelled that. Okay, so if I come in here now and I fix that, now you'll see that it will work. If I come out here and click, and now it's working again, right? And now I know what the problem was. Also, a nice thing about having option explicit and that you have to declare your variables, you can very easily see that you've typed something in wrong if you watch the capitalization. If you notice when I was typing this before, I typed in family size equals, let's type it in wrong, family size plus one. Now watch the capitalization. You notice that? See, this guy auto capitalized with a capital F, capital S. That's why I like to dim my variables that way or, my, or name my, my tables and my fields that way. This guy I can see is still a lowercase and it just visually cues me that, okay, I spelled that wrong. I had a database years ago I was working on for, uh, for a class and I typed in, one of my fields was accounts receivable, right? Accounts receivable and I had to type that in a bunch of times I should have copied and pasted but I didn't and in one of them I accidentally flipped the E and the I and I did not have option explicit set and I could not find that error and my code wasn't working and I had no idea why and this was before I knew, I knew the the joys of option explicit now the default option is actually not to have that in access I don't know why I don't know if they've changed that recently I haven't checked but I know versions ago the default was not to put that in your code. 
All right. So you go under Tools, Options, and then right here, Require Variable Declaration. Make sure that's checked. And then anytime you create a new module or a new form module, right, code behind a form or report, then you'll automatically get that option explicit there. Okay, so make sure that's checked. And that's a per system setting. So you have to change that on every machine that you actually develop on. And if not, and if you got old code, like, you know, old forms, I, I had to go through my old database and add this to all of my forms because I started building my database in 2002, I'm going to say. So I was probably using Access 2000 at the time. And that wasn't the default case. So I had to go through and put that in. And then it started popping up little errors I didn't even know happened. Runtime errors are hideous. <laughs> They'll just be in your code and you won't know that something's wrong. All right, if you like this stuff and you want to learn more, check out my free intro to VBA video. There's the link right there. I'll put a link down in the description below the video. You can go click on that as well. And if you want to learn even more, I've got tons and tons, hundreds of hours of different lessons on my website. I've got 36 different levels of Access Developer classes where we learn all the ins and outs of programming in VBA for Access. I think Developer Level 8. I think, 8 or 18, one of those with an 8 in it. I cover the option explicit keyword. We go into more detail on it. All right, so I hope this helps you out. Go, go through your code now and add option explicit everywhere. And also, make sure you give your variables good types, too. Don't just say dim x, right? Tell, tell access exactly what type of data it is. Dim x as long integer or dim x as string. All right, because you don't want to deal with variants. I got another whole video coming up on variants and variable declarations soon, so... If you like this kind of stuff, I cover it in my developer lessons too, but I got a fast tip coming on it pretty soon. Okay, thanks. We'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.